Okay. Okay, again. And I'm not trying to be, even as I look at Jonathan, I'm not trying to be skeptical, but I just I just am. Um, I don't know, again, how this is going to promote safety in particular. Um, and I also, th- I also just, as, even as I read this, I just say, you guys need more parking. You need bigger parking lots. We have lots of trees. It's okay. We can clear a few lots out and uh, increase our infrastructure, and I think everything gets solved. Um, and obviously, it, it, it's, there's a lot to that, but there's also not that much to that at the same time. Um, I also don't quite understand how, so which will help protect visitors. The pilot reservation system will protect visitors and our natural resources. I guess it protects natural resources because less people will be accessing them. Sure. So I guess that makes sense. I understand how you were down. Yeah. I understand how you're arriving at that sentence. Um, well also ensuring equality equitable equitable access and educating visitors about sustainable use all right i'm gonna put the ipad down now that is something that i don't quite connect the dots to as well i don't understand and i don't necessarily agree with the idea that this is going to ensure equitable access and educate visitors about sustainable use well, I, I just don't think it's going to educate i don't understand I how they think that you're going to educate people by making them have to sign up to park their car there like what 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 are you doing like what that doesn't tell anybody anything and again if the dec amr they want you know it's no different with politics people want transparency so like these people should be transparent as well and i don't see how that i don't see how anything that they're saying is going to educate anybody i did i did read somewhere that i can't remember exactly Mm -hmm. But they're gonna have someone and people there. And really, I don't. Yeah, like they're gonna actually have people there, educating, informing. Uh, I I don't remember where I read this. I read it somewhere. Are you um, sure that's not just like what I've been preaching to you for years that the Adirondack Mountain Club should be doing at at the Marcy Trailhead sign in? You know, I I maybe, think, maybe your brain is telling you that that's what I've been saying for years. No, I read it. I read it somewhere because I, I think they said they're going to have someone that's actually there. To, like, a, for example, a parking attendant. Sure, like they're going to have someone there actually checking. You know, no, that stuff like that. And there's they're going to be increased keep, signage as well. Yeah, they're going. Well, that's the thing. It's like it, are signs going to be increased? Um, there's or will there be people doing the check-ins? And who are these people doing the check-ins? Are they going to be? You know, these summer minimum wage employees that are, you know, just paid to do this, but like they're not going to put that much effort into it. And at the same time, what are they going to actually be doing? Are they going to be stopping people to, quote, educate them? I just don't think you're going to educate someone necessarily by uh, a person being there. I don't I just don't see how this program educates anything. And I don't think, you know, I mean, look around the high peaks. There's. You know, there's all the leave no trace signs. There's, you know, the rules. You know, you go to the lodge. There's the rules to camping. But, you know, it's it's the signs terrible. They're laid out in terrible ways, which is why people don't read them. There is a reason that a big, bold, short statements actually get through to people more so than, you know, in two paragraphs worth, worth of rules on a wooden sign. But that's another issue that I just didn't quite understand how they're arriving at the conclusion right. that this will ensure equitable access and educate visitors about sustainable use. And again, it's it's all they said they're going to manage this adaptively, totally and progressively, um which means I think as as problems arise or in, or they see uh you know the pros and cons that they will address those sure. when needed. Well, let's hope. Let let let's hope that truly will be will be the case because um you know I'm well aware that this is a pilot program and I'm well aware that there will be flaws and that they will hopefully be, you know, fixing it as they go. And I'm willing to give them that, um, you know, that leeway because I, as I mentioned, I'm totally, I get it. The Route 73, especially right there, is a madhouse and things need to be done. Of course, this is not what I think is the way to do it. Safely, at least, because the que- you know the question sure. is about about safety. There's so many other things that you can go ahead and do. And of course, you're trusting someone at the end of the day who's driving the car. Mm-hmm. Um, they've I've seen that they've implemented new signs there already, bright yellow, red, 
and yeah, they're flashing, gonna have the, the flashing signs, like yeah. crosswalk and stuff like that. And you know, they drops at the forty five miles an hour, and there's not even you know, there's no line across the road showing where people can walk. And you know, I feel like there could be more done. And if it's if safety is the main concern, I feel like there's so many more things that could be done that doesn't involve, um, I don't know, uh, being. Uh, just something that's going to affect this many people. Sure. I guess. And, you know, as I mentioned before with transparency, um, there's a lot of people who know the ins and outs of the AMR and, you know, the whole idea that, you know, they don't want the hikers there. These are the ramblings you hear on the Internet. You know, it's it's I guess I just question, is it safety that you're kind of hiding behind and using as your excuse to get the hiker scum out of there? Or is it? Is it something else? And, uh, yeah, I suppose I just don't connect the safety dots here other than obviously I understand if you turn cars away. But I do, as we talked about earlier, I think there's going to be a mad uh, influx of people at the exact same time. And there will be a line. Oh, man, a line of cars on a road where you can't get around anyone. That'll be great. All right. Sorry. Let's continue. Let's continue here. Um, Let me see here. Here, continuing with the article, now we're going to hear from president of AMR, Roland Morris, in the article states, The Adirondack Mountain Reserve is pleased to partner with DEC in the town of Keene in continued efforts to protect and preserve public access to AMR in the High Peaks Wilderness. The reservation pilot is a groundbreaking private and public partnership intended to improve hiker safety and the wilderness experience, while also protecting the natural resource for generations to come. For 137 years, the AMR has protected the reserve, and this important action in partnership with the DEC continues that tradition. First thing that stuck out there was uh, the efforts to preserve public access. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, you know, what is what are we defining public access? That the public can access this, or that the public assuming you will... signed up, you can exactly. Access it. You know, like there, if you think about it, they're giving more people than just the seventy parking spots the ability to go there. It's also the people who buy the bus tickets, and it's also the residents of Keene and Keene Valley. Sure. So it almost sounds like that they're even letting more people in there, hypothetically, than that were you know there this past summer. It sounds like maybe. Well, I mean, I guess you know, going with the bus ticket thing and. You know, people are already talking how all you have to do is buy a $6 bus ticket from Lake Plast to Keene Valley, and boom, you can go hike there. Um, <laughs> people are coming up with ways around it pretty quickly. But, I mean, he's talking a lot about preserving public access, but I guess that whole idea, too, of like Keene and Keene Valley locals still have kind of free reign, and bus ticket people have free reign. Well, at that point, it's like you've already limited the number of people but ultimately, those numbers don't affect it. You know, I guess, like, so you're not really limiting a number. It's just, uh, you're just limiting outside people is sure. what is kind of how I read that as. Um, you know, who, who I guess didn't sign up for the, the parking, but also, like, aren't in the club. And I do think that the Adirondack Park in general, just, you do need to, you do, I mean, I think it should be open forever. I think the rules for local people and not local people should ultimately be the same. Uh, it's a state park, so... That's how I that's how I feel about it. And I live in Lake Placid. You live in Lake Placid, but um would I like specific special treatment? Not really. I just don't I don't think I don't think treatment you give a local should be literally any different than you give anybody because that's what this that's what this place is. But uh continuing State Department of Transportation Commissioner Marie Therese Dominguez says said the Adirondacks are one of the great wonders of New York State and offer some of the world's most stunning scenic vistas. The Department of Transportation is pleased to partner on this important in, important initiative, which will enhance safety for all, there's that safety word again, and make it easier for residents and visitors alike to experience the natural beauty of this portion of the High Peaks region. Now that, that uh, when I read this the first time, that gave, that caught my eye. Uh, I think that word, this portion of the High Peaks region is very important. Um, it again demonstrates it's it's it is just this portion of the high peaks there are so much more uh to the adirondack park and the adirondack high peaks region uh it you know this really does as of now if it if this were to never expand it to anything bigger 
even though I think that's what a lot of people's uh, holdup is, is that this is the beginning of something much bigger. Uh, it is a small portion of the high peaks, ultimately, accessed at this point. It is, definitely. The town of Keene supports the pilot reservation system for access through the AMR easement, and this is Joe Pete Wilson, supervisor town from the town of Keene. This reservation system helps to address public safety and protection of the environment, which are important issues around are addressed in the um, HPAG report, which was the uh, the High Peaks um, the High Peaks Advisory Group group's report. The reservation system is also an effective strategy for a private landowner to manage the high levels of use that their easement attracts. And again, that's Joe Pete Wilson, supervisor, town of Keene. Um, I don't remember if it was this dude in particular, but there was like a couple years ago where the supervisor, town of Keene, and it was in the newspaper and stuff. He was like, had a screaming match with lots of hikers and was, it was a, it was a nasty, it was a nasty sign. I don't remember if it was him, but again, I just think back to those things, and then I think back to the, you know, kind of the um, reputation that AMR has, and it it just it feels gatekeepery, and I guess that's just kind of the whole vibe to me, the whole how the whole vibe of Keene Keene Valley and the AMR is, and it's not because there's like you know I grew up in Lake Placid. And, you know, Keen is like its own thing. It's just like that's just that's just kind of the vibe that I get. And I think this continues to push that vibe. Mm-hmm. But uh, I could be wrong. Uh, real, real, real quick, back to your back to your point on you feel that everyone should have equal um, like no one should be given special treatment just because of where they live. Sure. Now, I do understand how that statement is, you know, there's truth behind that. And there's also like, I understand why they would be giving the town of Keene and Keene Valley. That's that special thing. So I could be wrong for saying this. Um, but I think like, there are no wrong answers. Right, okay. I mean, it says here, you know, the town of Keene supports the pilot reservation system, right? So what if they didn't, the DE said, the, the DEC says, Hey, we want to do this, but we have to treat Keene and Keene Valley just like everyone else. Mm-hmm. And if you're a resident on the AMR, then you obviously get special access. Um, so it's like, okay, well, I'm from Lake Placid. Why Why can't I also sure. get that? You know, Yeah, I know I'm 25 minutes away, but it's like... But not know. really. So it's You're like, if, if they there, didn't yeah. give that um, to them, would they still support it? <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, totally. I mean, it, make, it makes perfect sense. Um, and, you know, Keene's a small town. There's not a lot of locals there. There's a lot of money there, not a lot of locals, but... Maybe it doesn't affect their their bottom line of of number of people. Sure, and you know, I guess it's like, dude, I I understand. I mean, I guess a lot of, a lot of my perspective comes from I live here, so it's like you're telling me I can't go in my backyard, or you're making it you're making it difficult to go in my backyard. But then I just think like, yes, it's my backyard, but it's also this is a different spot than you know national parks around the country. And at that point, like this whole the whole vibe of the ADK is supposed to be this, you know, easily accessible place. And it's just, you know, it feels like it's uh it's not go it's becoming slightly different uh with this sort of thing. But again, maybe I hope to be proven wrong and I hope that like this works splendidly. Uh I have my doubts. But let me continue reading the article here. The pilot reservation system complements state and local efforts already underway to reduce dangerous and illegal parking in the vicinity of the AMR property, including variable electronic message boards and additional signage, bolstered social media outreach and education, and increased law enforcement presence and parking enforcement. In recent years, pedestrian traffic, illegal parking, and roadside stopping along Route 73 have created a dangerous environment for hikers and motorists alike. Again, nobody will disagree with that. Absolutely. Uh, Things need to be done um, on that front. Beginning May 1st and through October 31st, Halloween 2021, the DEC and AMR will require reservations for the 70 available parking spots at the AMR parking lot for daily access to trails on AMR property, as well as the Round Mountain and Noonmark Mountain trailheads accessed through AMR lands. Walk-in users without a reservation will not be permitted. Permitted. Er, permitted. Those arriving to Keene... Got permits on the mind. Those arriving to Keene Valley via Greyhound or Trailway bus lines may access with a valid bus ticket from within 24 hours of arrival. 
Those arriving by bus must check in at the AMR hiker parking lot. The AMR parking lot is only accessible.